Now on Friday Night Lights, we step into the playoff spotlight in the Imperial Valley. The Brawley Wildcats in the brink of elimination. But could they rally together and force an unthinkable rematch with the Central Spartans for round two? And the regular season winds down in Yuma, how the Kings and Hawks would fare at home. And another road test for the Shamrocks fighting for a home playoff game. Survive in advance kind of night. Welcome to week 12 of Friday Night Lights. I'm Scott Gross. And I'm Cole Johnson. We have somehow made it to the final stretch of the 2022 <laughs> season. Some Yuma teams wrapping up their regular seasons and several Imperial Valley teams suiting up for playoff football. Let's start in the Imperial Valley, shall we, with the Brawley Wildcats hosting the Sun Devils of Mount Carmel. So here we go to Warren Field in Brawley. The Wildcats ready to claw away at the visiting Sun Devils of Mount Carmel. VSN's Will Torres, Brawley native, doing an honorable coin flip for this one. Sun Devils with the ball first, threatening the score, but Matt Gutierrez all over. Quarterback Joshua Bell for the sack, which would send Mount Carmel back a little bit, leading to this 46-yard field goal attempt, but it is blocked by a host of blue jerseys. Ball squirts away. Sun Devils hop on top with nowhere to go with it, though. Brawley takes over, and then there's Matt Gutierrez. Now the field general on the other side of the ball at quarterback tonight. First play for the Cats is a sweep outside. Daniel Camillo, and he is off down the sideline. Tries to cut back inside, but it's a nice gain for a first down into Sun Devils territory. But the drive would stall. Sun Devils back with it. Not for long, though. Bell's pass is picked off by who else? Matt Gutierrez doing it all on both sides of the ball tonight. Brawley takes over. This was a real defensive battle. We go into the second quarter here. A fast forward. Zane Richards stumbling and rumbling down for a first down. A couple plays later, Gutierrez with pressure, but he throws and flings it out to Makai Washington for a nice game. And that sets up a Brawley field goal. And then to save the day from another stall drive, there's Nathan Urbano for the kick. Snap good, hold good. Kick is through. Wildcats would take a 3-0 lead and a half. And the defensive battle would continue. In the end, the Wildcats would survive and advance in an 8-0 win. And hello, Scott, Brawley <laughs> Central, round two next week at Cal Jones Field. Ah, the gloves are off. Shimamoto sends him stadium with the 12 seed of Patriots of Patrick Henry in town against David Shaw's 7-3 Imperial Tigers. There they are, late first quarter. Patrick Henry with the ball. Sophomore quarterback Eli Ruiz. Gives to running back Caprice Presley, and he appears to lose the ball. Joel Via Campos jumps on it, but Presley is called down. Mm. No! Later in the fourth, later on fourth down, Ruiz passed across the middle. Check out the great defensive play by Angel Barron. And the Tigers get the ball back. They scored first on their two possessions here. Gavin Robles tosses to the right flat to Rashad Robinson. Robinson with a nice 20 yard gain, first down. Next play, Robles, watch this. He's going to roll to his right. Shakes and bakes, loses a tackle, and now he's going to go to his left to see if something's over there. He's going to spin, then slings to Seth Shaw. All of this for a two-yard gain. <laughs> Shaw, though, would open the game with a 35-yard score. On third down, Gavin looks for his brother over the middle, and it's broken up. The brother's hooked up. That's Gio on a 75-yard score earlier. That leads to a 35-yard field goal try by Ethan Gonzalez, and... <laughs> Just a little bit short. Imperial, no problems, though, tonight as they roll 35-7. to They get the four-seeded Bishops next week. To Cal Jones Field in El Centro for the Division 5 matchup between Mountain Empire and the six-seeded Vincent Memorial Scott. Jacobo Elias had himself quite a night late in the first half. They're already up 35 nothing. Elias slings to his right and finds sophomore Diego Cisneros for the first down. Scott's unstoppable. Speaking of unstoppable, tonight was the night of the quarterbacks. Why is Jacobo Elias pump fake? Then he's going to roll to his right. Defenders will slide off him like he's covered in Vaseline. There's a stick move, a spin, a jump, and only the sidelines will slow him down. <laughs> Moments later, Elias, he's going to toss to the far corner and finds his senior captain, Jesus Alonzo Hurtado. Scott's up 41-0 at this point. It's not even halftime yet. Vincent Memorial rolls with running time 42-6 and advanced to face Classical Academy next week. 
Coming up next, the defending CIF Division 5 champions start the defense of their title. Plus, we turn our attention to Yuma schools and the Kofa Kings and Gila Ridge Hawks back at home. We'll be right back after this quick water break. This is your wallet. This is Mark Kelly. This is your wallet with Mark Kelly in the Senate, fried by higher prices, cooked up when Kelly followed Biden's recipe of reckless spending, printing trillions we don't have, causing prices in Arizona to boil higher than almost any other state, paying people not to work, burning our supply chain and your wallet. Mark Kelly, just say no. Any questions? Clever Growth Action is responsible for the content of a sad. I am former Maricopa County Attorney Rick Romley, and this year I am voting for Adrian Fontes for Secretary of State. Look, I'm a lifelong Republican, and I did not make this decision lightly, but I'm doing this because his opponent is an extremist who wants to upend Arizona's election system. Sometimes you just have to cross party lines, and we can do better. I know Adrian Fontes is a person of integrity, and I encourage my fellow Republicans and independents to vote Fontes. Paid for by the Arizona Democratic Party, authorized by Adrian Fontes. The bladder control aisle. You won't shop here again. Your private business is your own. The constant struggle is over. Now there's a better way. It's HDIS. We home deliver bladder control products. We understand how you feel. For over 25 years, we've home delivered to many of the 20 million Americans who deal with incontinence. We offer all brands. We pay shipping and use plain, unmarked boxes. If we can help you or someone you care for, call for your free product sample pack and $45 in money-saving coupons. Our counselors will help you choose the right product. And unlike stores, we're always in stock. You'll get what you need. Satisfaction guaranteed. HDIS, the better way. For your free sample pack with your free catalog, $45 in money-saving coupons and free product samples, call 1-800-489-3026. That's 1-800-489-3026. Being young and being uh, diagnosed with breast cancer was very difficult because I could not relate to anyone being married, wanting to have children, and so I still hadn't lived my full life. 15 years ago, we didn't have any of this technology that we have now, Zoom, so everything was done via conversations on the phones because I would talk to people in New York. Learn how breast cancer recovery has changed in the last decade. Sports, weeknights at 10 p.m. Sponsored only by Papa Son Rice Bowl. and we'll get to that in just a little bit. Welcome back to Friday Night Lights. The defending CIF Division 5 champions, the Palo Verde Yellow Jackets, won the Desert League for the se Well, they're trying to win the Desert League for the second year in a row as they finish the season on a nine-game win streak. Despite the success, not a lot of respect in the Division 4 playoffs, though, as they enter tonight's contest as a seven seed. The season, uh, uh, the reason is a week of regular season schedule. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I need to work on my spelling. <laughs> uh, Friday Night Lights, Vanessa Gongoria is at Scott Stadium. Love the name. In Blythe with a recap and some post-game interviews. That's right, guys. I'm here at Scott Stadium where the Palo Verde Yellow Jackets just defeated the Mount Miguel Matadors 36 to 27. But they weren't in the lead the whole game. They were down 27 22 at half. But they found their stinger in the third quarter where there was an interception by the Yellow Jackets that led Marcus Macon to make a touchdown in the end zone. Later on, once again, Macon found the end zone, ran it in. But the extra point was not good. But they took the win 36 to 27. And here I have Marcus Macon with me. Come on in here. So you made all the touchdowns today. What is? How does it feel to bring home the W for your team? It's just a humbling experience. I just wanted to do it for my bros. And rest in peace to my bro, Richard Reed. Rest, I want to shout out to him. He goes to Silverado. And um, I just want to say I just put it all on the line for my brothers. That's all it was. Just, just full of emotion. That's all. And you've been in this position before. So what is it going to take to make it to the championship once again? Like I said before, it's going to take all gas, no brakes. Got to stay focused. We know where we want to go. That's really it. What was said in the 
in the locker room that made you guys come out and find that motivation and say, let's let's do this? It was the fact that our coaches, he, he told us to come together. Like, the only way we was going to win this game is we stay together as a team. We can't really argue with each other. we got to stay focused because in the big picture, we know where we want to get to in the end is the championship. That's right, in the championship. You heard it here. Marcus making wants end, to end up in the championship, and we'll see what happens next week. You're watching Friday Night Lights here on KYMA. Thank you, Vanessa. And again, the Yellow Jackets are down 27-20 yep. at the half, and they yep. came back behind Marcus Mackin right there. The Gila Ridge Hawks are having a much better season in year two under second-year head coach Jessica Slaughter. And tonight, the Hawks look to make it two wins in a row on f and four on the season as they hosted the Glendale Cardinals. Friday Night Lights, Luis Lopez was there, and we welcome him in. Hi, Luis. Guys, yes, just one win last year for the Hawks, three wins this year tonight, going for their fourth and their second winning streak on the year as well. We go over to Veterans Memorial Stadium now, Gila Ridge, getting set for kickoff. That's Vanessa and that's Kofa. There's Gila Ridge over at Veterans Memorial Stadium now. Gila Ridge getting set for kickoff as they welcome in the Glendale Cardinals. Beginning in the first quarter, first and 10 from the Hawks 36. Quarterback Steven Navis quickly finding his senior back. Chase came in. That's good for a four-yard gain. Hawks, however, would punt on this drive. We go to the second quarter. Hawks down 12 0. First and 10 from the Gila Ridge 45. Navas rolls out and finds the stretch hands of Cole Lancaster, who's taken down near the sideline. A nine yard gain there. A couple plays later. First and 10 on the cards, 34. Hawks hand it to Michael Galaz, who runs here for 17 yards to put the Hawks in the red zone. Gila Ridge in need of a touchdown. Will they get it? Will they end up do getting it? First and goal from the Hawks three yard line. Navas fakes a snap. Fakes the handoff, excuse me, pulls out to his left, fires it to the back of the end zone, the senior wideout, Braid in favor, hauling it in for the touchdown. Gila Ridge with the score they needed. They make it a 12-7 ball game after the extra point. In the end, it will be the Cardinals taking this one, 42-41. And moving on to another team heading in the right direction, Kofa Kings looking for their second win on the year as they welcome in the Maryvale Panthers. We start this one pretty late, actually, a little later than we usually get into games here. In the third quarter, second and 10 from the Kings 45, they hand it to Eduardo Ochoa, who picks up a five-yard gain. Kofa at midfield now. Following play on third and five, Kings hand it back to Ochoa, but this time he's met by the Panther defense. Nothing doing for the Kings on this drive. They're forced to punt. First down for Maryvale. They hand it to their running back, but how about the big fella? Lauren Phillips with the tackle. He says, I award you no yards. However, Panthers would end up with a touchdown later in the drive to go up 21-14. So now Kings looking for an answer. On second and six from their own 44, quarterback Gabriel Rodriguez Juarez tosses this one up. Someone coming down with it. Yes, Conrad Tuffley, the junior, making it the catch and breaking free for a 56-yard touchdown. Unfortunately for the Kings, though, that second win not in the cards for them tonight. They drop this one 28-21. to so, so, so close. Straight ahead, our out-of-town scoreboard and helmet props. Plus, we take you south of the border for a glimpse at the Imperial Valley Sentinelas. Don't go anywhere. Friday Night Lights. We'll be right back. I'm Maximus. And I'm Aurelius. And, and you're, you're watching, watching Friday, Friday Night, Night Lights. Lights. Happy Friday, everyone. I'm Cole Johnson. Monday on Sunrise. We continue to track early voting from over the weekend into Monday as midterm election day approaches quickly. How many locals went to the drop boxes early and what to expect from voter turnout? Plus, a big weekend in local sports. We follow up with highlights and scores for several teams making a push from a championship in the Imperial Valley to Arizona Western College Soccer in pursuit of a national title appearance Monday on Sunrise. Two for seven bucks every day. Oh, creamy ranch. Oh, melty Swiss. Oh, roasty beef. Two of those things for just seven bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. Wait a minute. <laughs> I had bought a brand new 62 Pontiac. And I'm coaching on the first base side. And I look over and I say, time out, time out. A young couple. I went out there and I said, young lady, <laughs> I don't appreciate you sitting on the hood of my car. What was her response? She says, I don't have to because I'm going to marry you. Built for forever. He was shocked. I didn't even know her name. <laughs> I didn't know her name. He was shocked, but I knew him. Life Along the Border. Their full, raw, uncut interview on KYMA.com. Growing up working class, there were always hard choices to make. I chose to build safer neighborhoods as a police detective. As mayor, I chose to fight for change. Creating clean energy jobs. More affordable housing. 
I'm running for state senate because families shouldn't have to choose which bills to pay. I'll focus on lowering the cost of health care, wherever it's provided, and expand paid family leave so working people can afford time off. I'm Steve Padilla, and I'll always choose to fight for Valley Families. NPG of Yuma El Centro has an immediate opening for a multimedia journalist. We're looking for an articulate multimedia journalist with good camera presence and a firm grasp of current events. The candidate must have strong news judgment and solid writing and video skills. Able to get news covered, get it on the air, and maintain a smooth delivery. The candidate we choose must be able to shoot and edit his or her own material. When applying for this position, please go to KYMA.com. When they learn something new and you can just see in their faces, it's such an incredible moment. It's those moments that are my favorite. Welcome back into Friday Night Lights. We're going to go right to our out-of-town scoreboard. We're going to start with our Yuma teams um, as we close down on the regular season. Cibola taking the tough 49-0 loss at Shadow Ridge. They fall to 2-7 and seven on the year. Yuma Catholic Shamrocks, though, they were rolling tonight. Another five touchdowns from Richard Stallworth. The Yuma Catholic wins at 49-8, to eight, and that's the numbers flipped yeah. around there. They're 7-2. and two. They are not... Two and seven, we promise you that. Is the Rocks actually one more regular season game looking for a home play? They came game. in ranked 10th in the AIA rankings yeah. and in class 4 8. So a big win today. They're going to have to have another win next week. Hopefully, they get a home game. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. They can beat St. Mary's next week. Could get a home game there. Now we go to our Imperial Valley teams in the playoff, playoffs. We have we another go to our score scoreboard. Can we bring up the other scoreboard? The other first? scoreboard. We got another scoreboard. Um, the Imperial Valley. Now we, we go, go to there. And uh, this tough one, the Clexco Bulldogs season comes to a close in the CIF Division Four playoffs and a loss at Chula Vista. They were the up higher seed at number six, but they won on the road because Chula Vista won their division. So Chula Vista wins that 35-27. And then Southwest, even with just one win on the year, they fall 49-32. Um, they hung around for a while, but they lose at Castle what, Park. Yeah, it was 1918. Yep. They, for a while there. Yeah, had a chance there for Southwest, but still putting up points. Glad to see all the points there. And real quick before we get into our helmet props, we want to give a shout out to a team unfamiliar to most, but holds a special spot for a small group in the Imperial Valley. The Imperial Valley oh, no. Sentinelas. A football team made up of Imperial Valley school athletes out of high school striving to continue their playing days without going to the college level in just their second year. The Sentinelas are knocking on the door of a championship in the Baja California League played in Mexico. They're currently off to a 5-0 and start. Yes, they are. So tune in early next week. We're going to have a little tour of their journey across the border and onto the field each Sunday. We'll have some highlights and talk to their head coach, Enrique Ruiz, who's trying to get the word out about the program. So congrats to them. Now we'll get to our helmet props. Helmet props. I'm going to go with uh, Yuma Catholic again. They had a tough, tough loss yeah. last week. They're, they're, they're back in the, the winning mode today. Richard uh, Stallworth just keeps on piling on to the yeah. record. Over 300 yards passing tonight. Five touchdowns, two picks. Back on the winning Schneid. Uh, Yuma Catholic <laughs> is mine. All right. And I got another gold helmet here. Uh, the Vincent Memorial Scots, they're moving on in the Division uh, 5 playoffs with a big win. Tonight, Jacobo Alia specifically, just unstoppable. That kid's something else. <laughs> something something else. else. We saw one of those highlights that yeah. Scott was doing. He's just incredible in that offense. Uh, congrats to them. Coach David Wong, Fernando Santana, they move on. And then, hey, we don't have the helmet on, but we got a special one, Palo Verde. We'll give yeah. it to Palo Verde. We're hoping to get a helmet of theirs tonight. And the gonna... helmet prop goes out to uh, Vanessa Gangora. Yes. Uh, she had a flat tire on the way up to Blythe tonight. Yes. <laughs> still plowed through Tough that. Night. Still got up there. Still was able to perform the, uh, yeah. the highlight out there. So a helmet prop for yeah. her. Yeah. Luis, who do you got? Guys, tonight I'm going with Brawley. A tough, grinded-out win for the Wildcats. But, hey, you know what? A win is a win. They're missing their starting quarterback in Ethan Gutierrez. But you know what? They get it done anyway. A big 8 nothing win for them at home. Missing a lot. They, uh, <laughs> they threw the, uh, the kitchen sink. They did. At Mount Carmel tonight. Let's take a look at today's best. And as we say goodbye to everybody, uh, we just want to say thank you so much for watching. And thank you to everybody for helping us tonight. George, Chrissy, Lewis in the booth tonight. Uh, Cole, Lewis, Luis, I should say, along with Vanessa. Everybody, especially you out there too. Thank you so much for watching another edition of the playoffs next week.